I think this is a really important point because I think when most people think about surveillance, they think it really rose like with the rise of technology, that somehow when we started to carry devices, we became more unsafe with regard to our right to privacy. And we didn't? No, I mean, we've got to have like a whole reframe and understand that surveillance was always part of state violence and the U.S. settler colonial state. So what I mean by that is, is that even though we have the right to privacy guaranteed in our constitution, that only guaranteed it for those that were white, mm -hmm. male, and cis. If you were black, if you were indigenous, you were surveilled very heavily by the, colon the, the colonial administration that eventually became our government. So for example, in New York City, um, in 1713, they passed this law called the Lantern Law. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. So during that time, because they were afraid of people mobilizing in the dark to resist um, slavery, they would, anyone who was black and indigenous and over the age of 14 had to carry a lantern. <laughs> And if you didn't carry a lantern while you were walking, you could be subjected to 40 lashes by your master and worse. And that idea was, at that time, that was the technology of the moment, you know? And it's the forerunner of what we see now when you go into, um, you know, black and brown communities in New York City where they do those massive lights and you can't focus because they're so bright. Anytime there's been a shift in technology, we've seen it turned in a way to be able to, mm. to manufacture control of the state of our, our lives. And at the very same time, there's a consumer strategy too, in the sense that we've been sold that carrying our own lantern will make life so much easier. Exactly. I mean, but we have to think about like whether it's the iPhone or whether we're using Google search, the devices and these platforms, they're not really free. We're paying them with our data. Yeah. And what that means is, is like, for example, let's say you're doing a Google search and you're about to go to the Women's March and you search, you know, what are my rights? Where's the location for direct uh, action? You know, how do I do civil disobedience? Just from a set of questions of what you put into Google search, you can be put into a database of people that they assume are going to be unlawful actors for that protest. So you don't need to be interrogated. You've already given it away yeah. in your search inquiries. So what do we do? Not search for that information? No, I think what we can do, and the way I talk about it, it's like harm reduction. So we know that these devices are gonna leak data to people that want to do bad things things to us. So we want to be able, and this is the conversation in digital security, is practice harm reduction by using circumvention tools. So things like signal on the phone can really help you protect like your text messages and the way that you talk to people so that you're off of some of the surveillance grid mm -hmm. for folks. You can also use um, DuckDuckGo as an alternative to Google so that you don't create like a data tracked a search engine profile so your searchers are kind of free from Google and Google Analytics. So that's a program that doesn't maintain a history of what you've searched for? Exactly, exactly. Or a cookie. Or a cookie. <laughs> Friendly name for something not so friendly. I know, exactly. Um, and the other thing that I recommend is something like, uh, something to protect your network access. So right now, if you go to Starbucks or if you go to um, a Wi-Fi network in an organization, you're, when you're connecting to the internet, you're connecting to the internet in the wide open. What you need is something like a condom to protect your access so that none of your data leaves so to protect your network access or give yourself that condom, um, one of the things that we recommend is something called a virtual private network mm -hmm. um, or using something like Tor. So I think that combination of using Signal, using a VPN to protect your network access, and then being able to use DuckDuckGo to anonymize your searches helps you be able to begin to start to take back some of your digital security. Mm -hmm.